Welcome back, everyone, to another YouTube Live. My name is Aaron, your host, and normally you're used to seeing Nate on the air with me. And right now, Nate cannot be here. There's an unfortunate circumstance that came up, and Nate, he might be coming late. He might not be coming late. I really don't know yet. So we will just do the YouTube Live as scheduled, the same questions, the same intro, all that stuff. But if Nate jumps in, we'll get some great perspective into there. I know that there's some questions that are baseball-focused only, so... We might not be able to do those, but I will still put them on the screen and I'll try to talk to about them as if I were Nate or at least thinking about what Nate might say. And uh, of course, lean on you all in the comments to contribute to those questions. That would help a lot. But first off, thank you everyone for coming. I appreciate you a lot. It is 6 p.m. Eastern time every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. We go live here on YouTube to do a sports card Q&A. Questions are submitted through the link in the description of this video. There's a Google form for next week's video and all the questions get submitted through that link and then we answer them here on youtube live but thank you everyone for joining i see damien in the house trevor ricardo michael brown thank you everyone for joining what's up zach glad to see you as well let's get this presentation going and if if nate comes nate comes otherwise it's just me for today so we'll see how it goes i'm very very used to obviously having nate here with me but to start off today, you guys saw the title of this live stream. We were talking about diversifying profits in sports cards and put the, putting them into new categories you might not be involved in or ones that you want to get involved in or ones you are involved in and just want to put more money into. So to start off, the question was from M Clippers. Thank you for the question. And it says, with the NBA in full swing, thoughts on taking profits and moving into soccer. So to do this, I just took a John Morant silver PSA 9 prism rookie and just said, hey, well, let's say you sold that card right now. What can you do with that money? So $830 sale on January 15th for this John Morant card. What could you do with it for soccer? You could take that and put that into something like an early Holland Topps Trump Sapphire rookie card. It does have the rookie logo on the bottom right corner. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying this is what you could do with that money if you want to take that profit and put it into another category. I'm just giving an example for each category, and then we'll talk about the overall picture after that. So you could take that money. You could put that into that Sapphire Erling Holland rookie that just came out over the last few weeks. You could take it and you could put it into a Ronald Acuna PSA 10 top spoil update rookie. However, that card is a little bit more expensive and probably even gained a little bit more value since January 7th. So you'd have to kick in some more money with that or find a different card that fits your budget. You could take that you could put it into a Kyler Murray 2019 Select Silver Field level PSA 10 rookie that's now $720. Those were way more expensive right when the football season started. Or you could take that cash and you put it into some Pokemon. You could put it into one of those Champions Path Charizard Shiny V cards, the Secret Rares. PSA 10s are right now around $740. And those cards dipped a lot. They were around $1,400 out of release. But of course, as the pop report grows, more supply hits the market. People are trying to grab the profit from their rips, from their purchases of the non graded cards. So those could have a chance to take up in the future as well, especially as Pokemon gains more value, which we have been seeing recently in the market. There's definitely been some percent swings up in the Pokemon market for the high demand modern sets and vintage sets. Uh, definitely check out at Pocket Stocks on Instagram to get some of that info. We post there at least, hopefully, you know, once a day, maybe once every other day about Pokemon information. Also, do you do do you take that money and do you put it into a Connor McDavid card for hockey as cards have exploded recently? As he started off the season with a three goal, one assist performance. Um, his upper deck young guns rookies are now between like twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars. This canvas UD was a thousand dollars on January sixth or 9th. so it definitely is worth more right now as well. But just an idea, the hockey market. So what do you do? What do you do with all that? You guys in the comments right now, if you sold a card, a John Morant, any basketball card, John Morant was just the example. But if you sold any basketball card. And what, what are you doing with that profit? Are you taking those profits? Are you separating it up over different sports? Are you taking all that money, putting it back into the basketball? What are your thoughts? I'll give mine right now, but why don't you guys jump into the comments and also give yours. If you were to sell that John Morant for $830, what would you do with it? Or would you not even sell it in the first place? Like John Morant's a guy who maybe I don't sell even in the first place, but it's just the guy I picked because he just did just come back from injury. He's been being talked about a lot, so I want to throw his card out there as he's gaining some more demand uh, coming back from injury. But truthfully, I think if I were to sell a basketball card for $830, and let's say I was into it for around $400, I'd probably take that first $400, and I'd split it up, and I'd put that into 
other basketball cards. So I take that 400, put it into non-graded cards, try to see what I can get that's coming out either later in the 2019 releases like Mosaic and Hoops Premium maybe because there's an off chance you can find some of those cards you can still grade right now, especially with Hoops Premium more so than Mosaic. But there's a good shot that you could find some cards maybe to grade, maybe capitalize on some uh, John Morant Silvers from Hoops Premium that you can grade on a 20-day because it's worth the extra money. It's worth putting in $50 or whatever it is, now maybe 70, in a gradient on that shorter submission time. Because if you get back a PSA 10, as long as you know it might have a really good shot at PSA 10, could capitalize there. And then take that other money. So let's say you profited like 300 some dollars after fees on this Morant. I'd take that money. I'd put some into soccer. Because as we're seeing right now, soccer is starting to gain some steam again. Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity, as we've talked about in Slap Stocks FC for so long, over these next year and a half, um, even six months to a year and a half, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I'm personally seeing a ton of demand, as I've talked about, internationally for a long time now. I'm a long time, meaning like four or five months, but that's a long time in the sports car market right now as stuff changes so quickly. So I really do think that soccer is a pretty good place to go with that money. Definitely find the sets that are in high demand. Um, definitely do your research, though. This is not just to say throw money into soccer if you don't know what's going on. You definitely need to learn sets, players, all that jazz before doing so. But that's a pretty good place, I'd say, to go. I also think investing in football, young quarterbacks that haven't played for a bit now, never, didn't even make the playoffs. And their cards obviously have fallen a ton since that peak going into the season for um, the, the football season. Those cards dropped a ton throughout the season is the classic, you know, run up to the main event, which is season kickoff. And then it starts to drop as they're playing throughout the season. I think it's a pretty good idea to take some of that money, put it in the football, young quarterbacks that you might be able to go and flip going to next season. Just kind of how the cycle goes. I would not be surprised if that $720 Kyler Murray select field level silver PSA 10 rookie is, you know, upwards of 1200 by July. You know, that I think it could really change that fast. And then also, I probably wouldn't put any money in the base, just as myself personally. Nate would have a different take. Keep in mind, if Nate was here, Nate would probably say you take some of that money and put in some scarce baseball cards. I would maybe say take a little bit and put in the scarce baseball cards. I'm not sure if I'd put in the high pop cards because I don't know how much room there is left going up into the season. There's probably still some room left, but you got to expect a little drop after the season begins. And then as some players start to play really well, maybe they start to pop uh, throughout the season. But, you know, that has to do with yourself and your baseball confidence and what you're investing in. I know Nate's talked a lot about those fringe guys that aren't Tatis, Soto, or Acuna, the guys that might get more demand going into the season. Um, but personally, you know, my favorite non-basketball things are soccer and Pokemon. And then also I kind of like the young football QB player right now because you're not really investing for their performance. You're investing for their hype going into the season. And unless some injury happens in the offseason, that can definitely ruin your plan, com plan completely. Um, I think it's more foolproof, though, than the in-season <laughs> investing with not really knowing how players are going to play, if they're going to get hurt. I mean, we just saw Mahomes get hurt yesterday. I'm not saying that that's going to alter his market at all, but but just to show you that anyone can get hurt. That's more what I'm trying to say. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I see a lot of you guys are talking in the comments right now. I really like that. Global Sports Card Investor says he'll, he'd put it into vintage soccer. Alan says that Holland is a safer investment than John Morant. Zach says he's going mostly into soccer. Uh, Bravo says that he's buying and investing in established Hall of Famers or players like Ronaldo and Messi. Trevor says, Jaw has a ton of potential I'd keep. I do agree with that. Seattle says, sell and buy more Jordan inserts. Definitely a decent play there too. And then uh, there's a lot of other chatter in here too. So thank you guys for definitely putting in some thoughts in here. And Bravo says, invest on some PSA 9s. Definitely a good way to get good mint cards for cheap values for sure. But that's just a little fun discussion. I think that the biggest point is that you do need to be thinking about as you make sales, what are you doing with that profit? You know, are you going all in, back in on the same thing? Are you trying to learn a new market? Um, I don't think that there's a wrong way as long as if you go in on a new market, you do your research, you commit to it, you really try to understand what's going on versus just throwing money at to throw money at it. I would not advocate for that, even if it was something that I personally like like soccer and Pokemon, I wouldn't say go do it if you don't really like it or if you don't want to learn it really well or put a lot of time into it because you won't see the benefit. And even if you didn't see the benefit, you wouldn't feel any reward from doing it because you didn't learn anything. Um, that's definitely the worst case scenario. So don't do that. Stick with basketball if you don't even have you know any any desire to go chase after some soccer or some Pokemon or you know hockey, football, baseball, whatever it whatever it is. 
the main takeaway for sure is to stick to what you know or go in hard and learn a new thing and really pay attention to that. Um, I think that works out well too, but just make sure you don't reach for something you don't care about at all. And there are, there are so many ways to go. I mean, there's also a lot of other non-sports cards that I didn't even bring up here. But jump, jumping into the next questions, that was a little intro. But Slab Stocks Breaks, we had a crazy week last week. I pulled that messy auto number out 25 for all you soccer fans in here. It was probably the craziest pull we've had at Slab Stocks Breaks so far. I couldn't believe it when I got to the card that was turned around. It was the messy historic ticket. If that was a cracked ice, I probably would have passed on camera. But good thing it wasn't, so I'm still here right now. But uh Messy auto number 25, really hard to beat that of one box of Chronicles Hobby. Absolutely insane. And uh, this week, we just sold out actually already of the 96 Tops Finest box on Friday. We're going after Kobe Bryant, rookie cards, Allen Iverson, Steve Nash, and Ray Allen, rookie cards too, Milwaukee Buck. But that break is already sold out, so sorry about that. Thank you to everyone that got involved so far. But we are do double dipping in 2016 Optic Hobby and 2017 Optic Hobby, the first two years of Optic Basketball. Those two hobby boxes, spots are still available at slapsocks.com slash shop to grab now for Friday. Tomorrow's our very first break day of the week. We have Hoops Premium and Mosaic Breaks going down tomorrow. So join the Slap Socks YouTube live tomorrow. If you want to watch those, it's always a great time. Tons of people talking, discussing, watching sports cards, getting ripped. It's a super fun time. I absolutely love it. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Those are sold out as well, though. And then last thing before getting into more questions is check out that Discord link in the bio link. Or in, in the description link of this video, our Discord is still open and talked, uh, discussed in all the time daily. So please join that if you want to talk with like-minded collectors and get the most up-to-date information on what we have going on. Rather, if it's breaks, if it's Slab Stocks Pro Development, which we're definitely going to be dropping more hints and uh, d different things into that channel in the Discord. But there's a lot of stuff that, that will go down in the Discord for sure. Let me check back on this chat quick. How much is that messy worth? Uh, that messy... I'd say non-graded right now, it's around three and a half thousand dollars. A PSA 10 would probably go for seven K right now, I'd say around there. It's an absolutely crazy card. Absolutely crazy card. Um, let me just this is a little harder that uh without Nate here, can't keep track of the chat as I go through the presentation. But we'll keep going on here with the first question from Dwayne T. Dwayne, thank you again for another question. I always appreciate your support with the questions. Hi guys, I made it a goal in 2021 to start narrowing down my PC to a few to a few big cards of the 15 to 20 players I've selected for my PC. When you PC a group of players, how do you guys decide what which players to cards to keep and collect? Over the past 12 months, I've accumulated five big cards of Trey Young all in PSA 10. The, the star indicates the cards was bought wrong grade of PSA 10, so I have a low cost entry point. Optic Blue Velocity, Optic Hollow, that would be a huge profit flip. Prison Pink Ice, huge profit flip as he graded that at PSA 10. Concourse Blue, number at 20, 299 from Select. That's a huge profit flip as well. And Courtside Base. I'll obviously be keeping the Courtside, but I'm having trouble deciding which one and how many I should hold on to. Uh, thanks. This is actually what I would do right now. So if you were looking at narrowing down your PC, I would take the Blue Velocity, the Hollow, and the Pink Ice, and I would probably sell those. Now, the Optic Hollow that you graded, that is more of a – up for debate thing like i could say like oh maybe i'd keep it maybe i'd sell it so i don't think that that one's as easy as saying the blue velocity and the pink ice those two uh non-numbered cards yes of the main lines of prism and optic but i would say that they definitely have the least uh you know luster to or least demand that may be associated with them in the future so i would sell those if you're looking to you know reduce your exposure on trey young or try and narrow down your pc Take that profit, put it elsewhere. The Concourse Blue number that 299 from Select, I think, is a no-brainer to hold. As with the courtside base, as you already stated, um, my reasoning behind the Blue Velocity for Optic pulled out of a retail um, cello pack. You know, like yes, it, those definitely matter right now, as do like all cards. But you know, five, ten years from now, will that card matter as much? Probably not. If you're comparing it to these other cards, at least that's for sure. Um, Prism Pink Eye is definitely more up for debate because it's a Prism brand line. And I see if you sell that, you don't really have any other Prism PSA 10s of Trae Young. So it's up to you in the end. Me personally, if I were keeping three, I'd pick the Optic Hollow Concourse Blue number at 299 in Quartzside. If I was picking two, I'd just keep the two select probably and sell the rest. But uh, hey, you can't really go wrong. I see you're going to be sending out a lot of profit off those sales. So congrats to Dwayne T. And uh, maybe exercise some of those diversifying um, tactics. Otherwise, just put it back in a basketball. You know, if you know that really well and enjoy that, for sure, go with that. 
All right, moving on. We got a question here from Aaron M. Hey, guys, several people are speculating that the hobby has a lot of room to grow and that the market will get even crazier this 2021. I believe this, too, for basketball, at least. Do you guys think we'll see a huge rise in the market? If so, will we see an even higher demand for the main brand base cards, causing it to increase its value? Or will we see the other non-main brands to rise in value? Would appreciate your guys' input on this. Thank you. Hey, everyone. So when Nate's not here, I'd really appreciate it. When you, when I read these questions, you guys are answering your answers as well in the comments. It never hurts to get more opinions in this chat. So it'd be really cool if you guys um, hop on here and definitely toss in some opinions on these questions as I'm you know, I'm trying to scroll through here and read them as I can too, while also answering these questions myself. But in terms of this specific question, yes, I think 2021 is going to be ridiculous for sports cards. I mean, we already got off to an insanely hot start with the $5.2 million uh, Mickey Mantle sale, among other things that are going on right now in the hobby, in the space, more people are getting involved, uh, big, big money people too, which really drives a lot of growth in the top end, which also increases the bottom end. So Pretty crazy what's what's going on there right now. But in terms of, you know, base cards and will they increase in value? Um, yes and no. I think we'll see a similar thing that happened in 2020 where they'll go up a lot. They'll go down a lot. They'll go back up a lot. You know, they'll have a lot of demand, not much demand. It's I think it's kind of all over the place. I don't know if it's something where I would say like, Yes, these are for sure going to increase because I don't want to say that. And then there's too much supply out there and people aren't buying them. But it does give you a chance to get cards that sell really quickly. Like There's a lot of liquidity with base PSA 10s. People buy them and sell them constantly. Um, there's not as much liquidity if you buy you know, a select white number off of 149. Like you post that on eBay. You post a prison base rookie PSA 10 on eBay. You're for sure selling that prison base rookie PSA 10 faster. It's just... It's happening because there's actually known values for those cards. That's where a lot of people run into the issue with, you know, buying more scarce cards is that people don't know what to value them at. So they just don't offer on them or they just don't know what to bid on them. And that's why stuff that sets comps daily or buy daily or, you know, try daily. Those are the cards that people really just gravitate to because it's easily, um, you know, you can really get knowledge on those cards fast. You can really understand what you're doing quickly. You you know you won't make a mistake based on what it's valued at today. That's what it comes down to. And I think that's what, what why a lot of people gravitate to them is just because there's so many sales of it, so, so high volume. And then add in the fact if one base card is undergraded for whatever reason, that's where you get the extremely volatile spikes. And we see that happen and we see it collapse. And it's going to happen more times in the future, it's gonna, it's already happened in the past. It's just going to keep on happening. It's just part of the market. Something like Messi 2014 Prism gains a ton of demand. Spikes super hard because the pop report's super low because it's super uh, undergraded. Then once those cards get graded, more supply comes out. It's going to drop a ton. It's just what's going to happen with cards that are low pop now but will be high pop in the future. So you need to keep that in mind and not overreach on PS, base PSA 10s if you see something running up super fast. Um, a thought that comes to mind with that might be like 2018 Prism I call Bridges, Silver Rookie PSA 10s. That thing has jumped a ton this year. But the pop report's like 300 for that card, while a Luca PSA 10 sitting at like 2,000. So clearly there's going to be more Bridges Silver graded as that card is now worth over $300. So as more of those get graded, if Michael Bridges is not an all-star, they're just going to drop in prices. More supply is going to come into the market, and there's only so much demand for a player like that in the Suns. That's not to say he's a bad investment. It's not me sitting here and saying he's a bad player. It's just the thought process that goes into actually buying and selling PSA 10 graded cards. While there's PSA, while there's cards in PSA's backlog that are still to be graded, um, that's why you definitely want to look into pop reports because you need to understand the stability of, of an investment. And if it's a low pop report, is it low because it's a tough grade or is it low because it's, it's undergraded? Undergraded meaning that no one's grading it because it's not worth anything at the moment. But as it becomes worse stuff, everyone sends them in. So an undergraded card would be like a 2018 Prism, Michael Bridges Silver PSA 10. But a tough grade card would be like a Shea Gilgis Alexander Prism Silver PSA 10, where it actually is a super tough grade because the centering was poor. Um, and for whatever, whatever reason, um, you know, there's just obviously less, there's worse manufacturing on it. I don't know why, you know, I'm not Panini. I don't know why they are worse cut, whatever. But it's led to the pop report leading to a really low gem percent, but a high amount graded. 
know, that might call Bridges PSA 10. That thing is probably going to drop in the future, just like with Nikhil Alexander Walker, just undergraded right now. There's only like 120 base PSA 10s of NAW and Nikhil Alexander Walker, but there's 13,000 of Zion graded. So you really got to do your research. You really got to know what you're doing. You don't want to over leverage yourself on cards that are undergraded because that's where you. I'm not, I'm not okay. Now it might be a good time to go onto the raw cards to grade them, but I'm trying to say don't over leverage yourself on the ones that are already graded PSA 10. You want to be selling when you have the first graded PSA 10s out there. You don't want to be buying those PSA 10s because more are just going to come in the future. And that's not to say it'll work every time. You know, sometimes a player is so good it doesn't matter, or, or for whatever reason, the demand keeps on going to that card. Michael Brown, thanks for that uh, $5 super chat that goes right to Camp Kessum. Donations happen every Friday at the end of the week um, from our YouTube stream. All that money goes to Camp Kessum to help kids get to camp for free. Do you believe PSA and BGS do population control and high demand cards such as Luca, LeBron, Kobe? Um, I've heard a lot of people throw out that conspiracy theory, and that's what I'll call it. There's, not, there's nothing that says that they do that they don't. Um, I'm not buying it. I don't think that there's pop control. I just think that's what happens. I just, you know, certain cards are tougher to grade than others and it just happens. I, I couldn't see, you know, if that is, that stinks, but I, I don't, I don't actually feel like that they're trying to control pops that they'll give obvious tens, nines and whatnot to make the pops lower or whatever it is. I know a lot of people, you know, track the conspiracy and whatnot. Jeffrey Fogo, what up? How's it going? For those just joining, Nate is not able to be here today. Um, he might come in midstream. He might not. I'm banking on no right now. So it's just me for say something unexpected came up. But uh, we're rolling here. We're rolling. It's going pretty well so far. And I appreciate everyone in the chat for sure. All right. So let's jump on to the next question after I get some water quick. Talking a lot. <laughs> All right. I'm aware that Prism has been the go-to brand and has always been great for short-term in investing. Short-term season, long investments. Although, what are your thoughts on Optic and Select? People always say that these are underrated sets. The cards are underpriced. But I've always wondered when we will see a rise in Optic and Select cards. I know they're they're a good long for they're a good hold for long term, but will it be any use to get them for short-term investments? So it's kind of tough because everything's relative to like when you came into the market. But in my eyes, like Optic and Select has rose a ton. You know. It used to be worth like 10% of Prism. And now it's worth, you know, maybe it selects maybe like 60% of Prism and Optics maybe 50% of Prism. And a point being is that Select has overtaken Optic. And if you listen to the Slapstocks podcast for the last two years, you would have heard that we love Select more than any other brand just from a collector, uh, you know, and even pop report standpoint, all that jazz. So I know that there's a recent wave, I would say, going to Select for whatever reason that might be. You know what I'm saying, if you know. But Select has always been one of the most talked about sets on our channel, even either if it's through email, Instagram, YouTube, podcasts. Like literally, if you just follow us any which way, we, I've been talking about Select for two straight years. So I hope that you jumped on if you uh, were able to. And if you listened, I talked about Courtside for so, 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 so long. Can't really explain how long. It's probably just been just as long as I've been covering basketball cards, which is two years. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to see this. I know that maybe it wasn't the, the way that it, I thought it would happen, but it's overtaken optics. So that's good to see in, in, in a standpoint of like, Hey, like we made a good call, but, uh, in terms of like short term flips, like I think you can't go wrong going prism optics, select any of the brands mid you know, season flips, whatever you want to do with your cards. Um, I don't think it matters which one you go with. I think all of them are going to have demands for different reasons. So uh, with that being said, sure, go buy Select, go buy Optic in the, in the short term, uh, buy them for the long term, buy Prism for the short term, the long term. I think all three of them matter a lot in the market. I think Mosaic matters a lot too. Um, it's kind of a different alternative for those people that don't want to go and spend big money on Select and PS and Prism and stuff and Optic too, but still want to get into a Prism Select Optic Optic-like set where there's retail format. You can get a lot. You can grade a lot. You can get silvers. Um. I think that's a very important set going forward, Mosaic, for sure. Especially for the budget collector and budget investor, no doubt about it. As with Hoops Premium, um, what does that do to Hoops normal stock? I don't know. Um, I know that Hoops 2019, the normal release that came out before, you know, right at the beginning of the year, that's worth a ton of money right now. It's worth more than Hoops Premium stock, that's for sure. Um, in terms of like 
the hobby boxes granted that hobby boxes for hoops premium are, are only h2 like the hybrids so kind of hard to really get a good read there but i think the hoops premium is a great budget set i think it's something that people can mass uh, amass ps base prism or base hoops premium rookies of silver hoops premium rookies i uh, grade them up i think it was really I, I know a lot of people out there are saying too many sets too many of this this that but guys, if the demand keeps coming, if the demand's still super high, we need these options for people that can't go and drop three hundred and fifty dollars on a Prism hanger box from two thousand nineteen. You need that forty dollar hoops premium hanger box for those people. You know, otherwise, it's it's just all too expensive. Like, there's nothing else really to say about it. Um, you you just need those options. You need those two lower options of mosaic hangers, hoops premium hangers, cellos mega boxes, whatever you name it. Um, you know, if the demand's here, it, it matters. And if it's not here, then you'll see the prices adjust accordingly as with prison becoming less expensive. Um, I don't think that it's necessarily going to all contribute to like, uh, your, or, you know what I'm saying? Like where, where hoops premium mosaic just become irrelevant. Like, I don't think that's, that's the case. I think it really matters that those sets are out there to help those people get in, you know, on budget friendly, options and of course budget friendly now isn't budget friendly two years ago but it's still better than a 350 dollars prism hanger for those people that can't afford that for sure what's up steve how's it going what's up joshua yes go pack go man i was at that game this week and trying to go next weekend too i really hope i can but a crazy game super fun i can't wait to face Tom brady and the buccaneers steven shield let's see what we got here do you guys think when the covid vaccine is available to the full public in some months in some months to a year, people return to their offices for work and COVID is for the most part behind us. Do you think the car market will take a slight dip as people stop working remotely from home and will be in their pre-COVID work routines? I believe that most of the new members who join this hobby during COVID will stay, but since people will have less free time in their hands, I could see a slight decline in the hype and volatility of the market. I want to hear your opinions on it as well. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Steve, I think you said, or Steven, I think you said a lot of really good points here. I agree that hype will probably be down some. I agree that the volatility will probably be down some. I also can probably say that the amount of people entering into the market will be lower. Like it'll just be a lower rate of people entering in. Like we've seen hyper growth over these last, you know, over the last year. You got to expect that that growth rate to decline. But what I am trying to say is that I don't think that people are, you know, leaving. You know, I don't think that people are of course, there's going to be some people. I'm not saying like every single person, 100% of the people are saying the hobby that came into the hobby in the last year. I just think a lot of people are really getting into this or really believing it or really taking this as like a big part of their life now. I think it's going to stick with them. Now, with that being said, like I'm saying, hype will probably go down a bit. I don't think the growth rate will be as huge, but I still think it's going to be you know d decent and pretty big um, for all this stuff. And I I agree. With Michael Brown here, card market has also transcended where there will be a little dip and nothing too scary. Guys, we've never seen anything like this before. The amount of money that's coming into this. If you think about rare art, I saw Patrick Ryan on Instagram say, like, art doesn't go down in value because the high-end buyers keep it up. They keep setting new records. They keep buying new pieces. Like, you look at the amount of Jordan Fleer 86 PSA 10s, you know, the amount of Bowman Chrome, Mike Trout, oranges, and golds in around 50, like, there's always going to be those huge players to buy those up and to keep the market going. And I, I just think there's so much money involved now. There's so many funds getting involved. There's so, guys, there's, there's a lot more than maybe that, you know, you all see or can see or think, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people. I get, I get, I'm very privileged. I get an absolute amazing opportunity to talk to people. I never would have a chance to talk to if I wasn't in the position of leading a company that talks about sports cards just daily, you know, for the last two years. But it opens my eyes up to things that the person that just sits on Instagram and just reads, you know, scrolls through doesn't see. And it it is a lot, a lot, a lot of money coming in and a lot of people getting involved that are really big. And, you know, there's a lot of just behind the scenes buying going on that isn't even out there in the open. So like it, it like Michael Brown's saying, you know, it's transcended so much that I just can't see the people would say collapse. I've been hearing that for two years, guys. I've been hearing it for two years ever since I started. When Ronald Cunha tops update, pris uh, not prism, tops update rookie PSA 10s were at $75, I heard collapse. When they're at 100, I heard collapse. You know, when Prism Luca is at 150, I heard collapse. Been hearing it the whole way. And it just keeps growing, keeps getting bigger. More people get involved, more companies, more funding, all that stuff. 
Now, I do agree with this. Zach, I do agree with this. Donruss, basketball 2021, 2020, 2021, at $1,200 a box is stupid, guys. That is just dumb. That is so dumb. You will not catch us breaking Donruss on uh, slab sacks breaks if that's the cost. I'm not giving in to the people up charging that high. There's just no way. There's just no way I'm doing that. I'm not charging our customers so high for that product. Like, that's stupid. <laughs> that is so unbelievably dumb. I can't even tell you how dumb that is. And you see everyone in the chat agree with that. And no, thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. But there is a lot of other stuff we're coming to the table with and offering that I think is really awesome value uh, versus something like that. Like $1,200 for Donruss, guys, 2020, 2021. That is just crazy. And guys, I don't know if that's Panini. I don't know if that's distributors. I don't know if that's, you know, wholesalers. I don't know who that is that's making it that. Truthfully, I don't think that's Panini that's doing it. I see a lot of people blaming Panini. And I don't know if there's a way for them to regulate regulate it, which is maybe why you're blaming Panini. But I don't think it's Panini. I think it's the distributors that are strongholding every single person that, can, that is trying to get their hands on wax to, you know, bring to the secondary market like myself. Like Jamila Chop, Mealy Pops, like Card Shops, like Breakers. I think that distributors are strongholding everyone for that type of stuff, and it's crazy. And yeah, sure, 2019 Hobby of Donruss is 1800 on the secondary market now, but who in their right mind is buying 2020 product over 2019 product? Like, I don't, or I guess I, I suppose I see what you're saying that 2019 Hobby of Donruss is even more, which is true, but there's going to be a ton, of, there's going to be a lot more blade made. There's going to be worse a worse class than I'd say, at least not the superstar potential of Zion and John Morant. I don't think anyone can argue with that. Can anyone sit here and say Anthony Edwards and LaMelo or LaMelo and James Wiseman is more superstar, more hype, more potential than Zion and John Morant? I mean, if you sit there and say that, I, I don't know, um, you know, how, I don't know what to think about that, I guess. I mean, some people have, have their own opinions on that, but I can't get on board with Donna Hobby at 1200 a box. There's no way. I mean, sure, I might get, I get, I might bring Donruss to the table through other forms like retail, but uh, I won't be doing it through hobby, through distributors. I'll tell you that much. All right, you guys can keep discussing it as we move on because this is a, a way, way more fun topic that I think uh, we can take more joy in. I don't want to make a negative negativity over here now, but I think that that was you know worth talking about. Do you think inserts will be big again? Select and Revolution have some really nice inserts, and yet. Guys, uh, Carolina sports cards, I absolutely love. Love these inserts. Select top selection, select phenomenon, stargazing from Revolution. Of course, you get the silver parallels. You get the galactic from Revolution. Just absolute beauties. Um, I already think that there's a lot of demand for inserts, actually, more than people think. Um, the values are very high in some of these cards. Do I think that they can progress even further in the future? Yeah, for sure. Um, do I think they're under, undervalued compared to some prison base PSA tens? Definitely. But you know, the market's got to say what, what needs to happen on these. Um, I think it just kind of comes down to what I talked about earlier, the unfamiliarity, the lack of comps, the lack of knowing how much, how much value a card brings like a select phenomenon, Tatum silver PSA 10 versus a prison base PSA 10. You know, everyone knows what the values of the, the prison base PSA 10, but you know, how do you know what a select phenomenon is? I mean, obviously there's comps for it, but like let's say only a BGS 9.5 is sold in the last two months. So, you know, a newcomer into the hobby doesn't know how to value that. And that's where you really get these, you know, log jams of inserts and parallels not catching up to the base ROI or whatever it might be. You know, whatever you guys might think of that. That's that's why, in my opinion. But with that being said, guys, like I love inserts. I love love stuff like this. I think a lot of you guys know if you you know, follow me personally on, on Instagram or whatever. That's the stuff, type of stuff I gravitate to for sure. And it just all depends on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to flip in the short term? Are you trying to invest for the long term? Are you just trying to collect? Are you trying to play both ways? Are you trying to take some profit and reinvest it? Um, but you can't go wrong, in my opinion, with these with these cards for sure. Uh-oh, Joe. Joe with the midstream, with the midstream message of Ja down again. Is John ja Morant hurt again? I know what they're playing right now. Can't wait to catch a Bucks game after this. But is John Morant hurt again? Is it bad? Also, please hit that like button if you haven't already. Um, it's a uh, it's a it's a fun time here. I, should, I lost my train of thought. Nate's not here today, but it definitely helps us grow if you hit that like button. 
and uh, help me out for sure. Get more people on this live to try to try to answer some questions. If you guys go into the description of this video right now and submit a question for next week, that's how you submit it. It's in the Google form. I think it's the third line down. That's how you submit a question for next week. All right, what are some upcoming UEFA sets you look forward to seeing in 2021? I'd love to see get your guys' feedback because I'm trying to expand my knowledge into other sports cards, especially soccer. So not every set that I put on here is UEFA. Um, three of the four are, which means that you know, that's a Champions League set if you're talking about UEFA. So like I also have a Premier League set in here and Bundesliga set, but I still think it's worth mentioning. So right now it says that February 3rd, is 2020-2021 Topps Chrome UEFA Champions League set? Do we think that's going to happen? I mean, 2020, sorry, 2019-2020 just released it in December. Um, I know that that got pushed way back. So I was supposed to come on February of 2020. Ah, there we go. Brad said I got pushed back to May. Okay, see, now I'm mad because I pre-ordered some, and now that money's going to be tied up for the next, you know, three months now or five months, actually. So that's great. But – uh I mean, good to have it for sure. I'm not mad about pre-ordering it, but I thought it, you know, it's going to be February. So Prism EPL comes out in February, not a UEFA set, but is a soccer set. And I do think that the hobby is pretty overpriced right now. But I mean, some people have differing thoughts. If you watch the Slab Sox FC interview from this weekend, Card Hour and Sports Card Time, they really like the set, the pre-order cost. They like it with what it has to offer with Color Blast, with Kaboom, all those big inserts. Um, that is something that Topps Chrome doesn't offer. It doesn't offer those big inserts. It offers some really, really nice cards that probably come at better value than Prism EPL right now. You know, like whatever rookie refractors are going to be in there, numbered and all that stuff. But in terms of like Kaboom and Color Blast, like Topps Chrome doesn't have something like that. And Topps doesn't have something like that for baseball either. They just don't have those inserts that really hold value of the Topps Chrome releases. So that's something that does differentiate Prism from this. But, uh, Prison Premier League come, comes out in February. And I think that there's going to be value in some of the configurations. So I don't know exactly on, you know, hobby, what you should be paying. But there's also, there's a million configurations out this year. I have to imagine some people will be able to get their hands on that for cheaper than hobby pre-orders. Well, they will for sure be able to get their hands on for cheaper, but more at like, you know, the, the same rate as hobby, I should say. Or not as crazy of a rate. And then March 3rd, it, or sorry, March 24th is Topps Finest Champions League Soccer. Finest is a nice set. It's not Topps Chrome, but it's a nice set. And then, of course, last year, the Erling Holland, his first rookie card came out, that actual card pack pulled out of a set. So that was big for last year. And then also on the 24th is Topps Chrome Bundesliga. As of right now, um, Zach, Premier League Investing, anyone else in the chat? Do you guys think that that's going to happen on March 24th? And then Brad Nolan in the chat says that Fati Sapphire PSA 10 just sold for 2750 and 3050 tonight to the moon. We pulled five of those in 10 boxes. Five of them. And the people who are getting them, we're getting them for $17.50 or $40. So, or maybe $80 too, depending on the amount of boxes that were ripped. But insane, guys. And Joe was uh Joe was scaring everyone. And then also the new set, Tops Merlin Chrome Champions League. So that's set. I think is going to be more budget friendly. I'm trying to work on a set that's like a Topps Chrome set, but that's not Champions League. Or I should say like the main Topps Chrome Champions League. So we'll see how that does. That's a new set too. But there you go, Michael B. Some sets that you can look at coming up in the future. But I really um, urge you to go and study the old sets first before jumping to the new ones to understand what sets matter versus other sets and whatnot. Just look up all those sets before the previous years. Do you prefer the PSA slab or SGC slab just based on looks? Now, in terms of consumer, now in terms of cu customer service, PSA or SGC. Lastly, based on turnaround times, PSA or SGC for bulk order. Thank you for answering. Uh, if anyone listens to YouTube lives, podcasts, Instagram, Instagram stories, whatever it might be, I think all of you guys know what my take is in here. It's PSA or bust, especially when it comes to PSA versus SGC. I could not advocate more against SGC probably, especially if you're comparing PSA. Um, first off, I think SGC's cases, the more I look at them, the more I see them. I just think they look cheap. Um, they look cheaply made. I've held them in my hand before. The plastic feels cheap. You know, there's not much more to say than just I think it looks cheap. As for the turnaround times on a bulk submission, PSA is long, like really long, like probably like a year right now. 
if we're talking about like a true like bulk submission, like you're submitting yourself to PSA, it's probably like a year. And the SGC has gotten extremely bad. I couldn't tell you exactly what it was, but I know a lot of people were having a lot of problems over the last six months with them to a year. And I don't think that I would advocate to send the SGC with, you know, comparing the turnaround times either. Customer service PSA has been pretty good to me. Um, I've had, you know, I've called them in the past. They've answered questions. You know, it's not that they can necessarily do a whole lot. By your SGC's customer service has been bad too, from what I've been hearing um, from people I know. I know it's probably a small sample size, but just give me what I hear. All right. Here we go. Here's a baseball one. Now, I can't really comment on uh, a whole lot, but what I can say is this: is that this is I can just read this off the screen. <laughs> when could we see the players that just signed? During the start of international sign period in baseball in a Bowman Chrome pro or in a Bowman product. So Jason Dominguez, top international signee from last year. I know that much. Um, July 2nd, 2019, he signed, and his first card release was May 22nd, 2020. So that was the following spring that that released in the new Bowman for 2020. So anyone you saw just sign recently, whenever that was, uh, I think that Nate was talking about recently, probably be the following Bowman set. Now that I think about it, if they did, so there's probably signees over the summer. Um, those guys would be in this upcoming Bowman set. The guys, if they just signed recently, I don't know. I mean, I wish that Nate was here to maybe give more comment on that, but maybe you guys know in the chat. Were there guys that just signed recently? Nate really recently was talking to me about a new Brewers international signing, like within the last within the last week. So that's why I think that maybe those guys might be included. I don't know. I know that makes me sound un uneducated, but that's because I am on this, and I'm leaving it up to you guys to – do more research or Nate and a future date to comment on it. All right. If you're buying wax as an, as an investment, how can you tell it hasn't been reopened and resealed? Very tough. Um, if there's a good counterfeiter, if there's a good con artist out there, it's very tough to tell. I've seen a Pokemon guy open a Poke Rev actually on YouTube. He opened a box of Neo Genesis from uh, J Japan and you, he couldn't even tell until he started to open the packs and got like halfway through when there's some funny business going on with the pack configurations and stuff. And that was a completely counterfeit print set. Um, I don't know, you know, about sports card sets. I doubt that, you know, much new stuff would be resealed. I've heard of the classic, like resealed return to target, put back on the aisle. You go, you buy a blaster, you get it, you open it. It's got like eighties cards in there or nineties cards that could happen. At that point, you can just return it to Walmart or target and say, like, yo, like you, you know, someone returned this, it resealed it. I I don't have that much advice on this. You know, you always want to make sure on certain sets, like to check it with different photos that you know are real. Um, check the shrink wrap around it. Does it seem like it was like kind of chintzy? Like it just got really, really like vacuum sealed like poorly. Um, is there glue? You know, on the packs and stuff. I would I would try to check stuff like that. If it feels wrong, it's probably wrong. All right, we got two left. Actually, it's the same question. But I'll tr I'll try to give some uh. Give some thoughts on this from Kevin Sawyer LV. Thank you for the question. As I looked into baseball cards to invest in for the 2021 season, I noticed that one of my targets, Victor Robles, has a rookie card from Tops that is a horizontal. Personally, I don't like these cards. Another one of his rookie cards is vertical, but from Tops update. I've noticed rookies from Series 1 or Series 2 have higher prices than a rookie from update, regardless of the photo. Another example being Aaron Judge, whose rookie card of him Catching is a higher price than his tops update of him hitting my preference. Will tops update rookies always hold less value? So that answer is no. And it all is based on, as Nate has circled on the screen, the rookie debut. So an update, that rookie card is a rookie debut. It's an in, it's, it's not an insert, but it's a different card number. It's called rookie debut, and it says it on the bottom. You can see where Nate circled that. Rookie debuts always hold less value than their counterparts in S Series 1 or Series 2 from their actual rookie card because then they put that rookie debut in the update. Sometimes you get the occasion where Acuna or Soto, where their update card also has a rookie debut. So they have a normal update rookie and then a rookie debut. That update rookie is super valuable. Like Ronald Acuna update rookie, super valuable. But that rookie debut, not so much. Same with Soto, update rookie, super valuable. Rookie debut, not so much. And that's horizontal too on both of those guys. I um, mean, then you'll see the same thing here with Fernando Tatis, Series 2 PSA 10 with much more than update PSA 10. Uh, Nate circled their rookie debut on the bomb there. You know, the top series two is his main rookie card from tops. So 
With that being said, that's all I got. And yeah, look at hey, Viking Horde. So he said buy from Slab Sex, and you know you got real cards. And if there's ever a day that I run into a box that's been resealed, because we are doing a lot of openings that are vintage openings or you know, mid-2000s openings we've got coming to the table and really high in boxes too that could be subject to fraud and faking. Um, I will make it right with you all. You'll know, we'll get refunds, of course, if you ever buy from us and it, and it ends up being resealed. I did not reseal. That's going to be a 100% fact. I did not reseal it because it makes no sense for me to sell it to you and open it. And I wouldn't do it anyways. It's completely unethical. But I will definitely go back to where I sourced it from, figure out the details. Who did they source, source it from? Try to get refunds along the way. Um, but first and foremost, take care of you all and get you all refunds. If there ever were to be a box that were fake or resealed or not the correct cards, I hope that never happens. Fingers crossed that never happens. We're opening some pretty sweet stuff coming up here in the future. But if it does, you all will only re receive real cards that never worry about fake boxes being opened on slap stocks or at least fake boxes being opened and fake cards being sent to you. Um, that's for sure. That's for sure what my advice is, or at least, you know, what I'm trying to say is slap stocks breaks. We'll take care of you. However, you know, whatever we got to do, we will take care of you. Michael Brown, what's your wax collection looking like, Aaron? We'll just zoom out really quick. You guys can take a peek. If you guys want to, a lot of this stuff is either sold or is going up on slap stocks breaks or is being held for a bit. Sorry, I had to get a drink. It's uh, kind of been, without Nate here. It's a lot of talking. 46 minutes straight of talking is a lot more than, I'm um, used to without opening cards and getting a break in between. But um, I just want to thank you all for, for joining, for watching today. Slapsacks.com slash shop for NBA Friday Showcase on Slapsacks.com. We're doing that this Friday. 2016 Optic Basketball, 2017 Optic Hobby Basketball. Both are hobby boxes. And 2016 Optic Basketball, you opened in the past, was an absolute fire. Um, we hit some insane stuff out of that. Yaros Optic Hollow, two LeBrons, DeJounte Murray, Orange of 199, Ben Simmons, Jalen Brown, um, two autographs out of that, some other LeBrons. I appreciate all of you guys for watching today. It's almost Sapphire break time. Wednesday, we got more, another Sapphire break coming. We've hit so many Fatih and, and Hollands. Brody Gray Collectibles, I'm in, I'm in on the Immaculate Soccer break on Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining. I think we're getting decently close on that, so... If you guys have any friends that want to join high-end soccer breaks, please uh, point them to slapsocks.com slash shop. We do have some spots remaining in Wednesday's Immaculate Soccer Break. Uh, last time we hit a Mason Greenwood rookie logo card out of it. That was a really cool hit. Uh, definitely much more to come. Zach, thank you for joining. I really appreciate all the chatter, adding to the soccer talk. Um, it all matters to me. It all helps a lot. And I really appreciate you all for joining and giving your thoughts in the, in the description or in the, in the comment section. It's a blast. No Nate table. We're going to be looking forward to having him back for next week. I appreciate you all. Look out for Slap Sex Breaks tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. Some really awesome stuff is going to get opened up. I'm signing off to, for today, and I'll see you guys all throughout this week right here on Slap Sox YouTube Live.